welcome to Home From Home. I'm Brim Watkins, your guide as we explore the regions of Heidel Bihar in Hungary and Bihor in Romania. I'm in Letevertes at the moment, at the site of what was Hungary's only river abattoir. They would kill the pigs and let the guts and blood fall straight into the water. Which is very appropriate because it's December now, it's freezing. And this is the season in which Hungarians and Romanians will traditionally kill their pig in order to have food for the winter. We've been invited to Hedgkrusentimre in Romania by a family so we can visit them on the day of their pig slaughtering. But before we do that, let's have a look at what else you can do in the area. Ermel Lake was named after the stream Air that is crossing it. Till the middle of the last century, it was a land of wetlands, where people lived mainly from fishery. Nowadays, as a result of drainage, agriculture is the main economic sector. But at the beginning of winter, it is mainly household activities that are in focus. Every house in the region has a barn for the cows and the horses, as well as a pigsty and a hen house. A clever invention was the small building on the top of the pigsty, which serves as storage for the corn. Thus feeding the pigs underneath is easy, the dry grains just fall through the gaps in the floor. The pig killing feast is an old tradition in these parts. For peasant households, it used to be the biggest occasion around Christmas and January. They time the feeding of the pig in order to have sufficient meat for the whole family throughout the winter. I'm in Sekehid now, exploring the ruins of an old castle. It was built by the Zoyomi family in the 15th century, commanding a view over the surrounding region. But it was later destroyed by the Habsburgs as part of their program to get rid of feudalism in the region. It's a very atmospheric place, especially covered in snow. But the site didn't remain empty. The Stubenbergs built a palace in the same location using the materials from the former castle. Since then, it's been a nunnery for Franciscan nuns and a school. But recently it's fallen empty and it's beginning to fall into disrepair. But there's currently plans to turn the site into an orphanage. We're in Borsch now and we've come to the studio of a local carpenter, Antol Lajas, and he's going to show us his latest project, which is producing scale models like these from the crazy mechanical drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. And I'm surrounded by them and we're going to go have a look at exactly how they work. So you have to imagine that what my hand's doing is actually the water falling on the wheel here. So this one here is based on a design for a printing press that da Vinci made. And the idea is that when you push this that way, it pulls whatever you've got into it and pushes it down. And then as you reopen it, this weight here will pull it back out, ready for removing. And yeah, it's quite a simple device, but it's very beautifully made. Igen, ennek a lényeg az volt, hogy egy mozdulatból, tehát hogy egyik kező tette rá a lapocskát, másikkal mozgott a szerkezetet, hogy ne kellessen külön leteszed megint. Tehát ilyen, yeah. hát ez is egy ilyen automatikus, vagy egy ilyen, ilyen hogy is mondják, hogy könnyebben mozogja automata. It's, it's very interesting to see these kind of designs for things like printing and mechanics that kind of it was, it was a long time ago, hundreds of years now, but it, it really kind of created the, it was the beginning of our modern world as we know it today. Things like the printing press and machines for lifting heavy weights and it's, um, yeah, it's very cool to see them now. 
És, és miért? Miért az csináltak? Honnan jött az ötlet? Hogy miért Da Vinci-vel foglalkozik? Igen, igen, az egész miért? Da Vinci terv az, az honnan jött? Hát ez egy, tehát egy, egy olasz professzor jött az ötletekkel, hogy képekkel, rajzokkal, hogy mm. tudunk-e csinálni ilyen szerkezetet. Tehát úgy kezdődött az egész dolog. Akkor kapcsolódtam én be a Da Vinci mm. dolgokba. Tehát az előtt mindenféle asztalos munkával foglalkoztunk. Csak jött evel, a, és azóta, hogy beleszerettünk ebbe a Da Vinci-be. Ja. Na, Nagyon érdekes, örülök, hogy igen. a terv volt. Hát hozta a képeket, a rajzokat, és akkor utána már mi tervezgettük, hogy mi méret, de... Ja. Csak Jó. már ez már ilyen... Ez, ez már a, a soknak az eredménye, mert az elsők azok azt nem sikerültek ilyen. Elrontottuk, mert sok a számítás, fogas kerek, átételek, mit a méretbe, hogy arányos legyen. De az elsők azok nem mentek ilyen hmm. automatikusan, mint ahogy most már szegnőtön. So, Da Vinci didn't just design nice machines for carrying water and cutting up wood. He was also quite fond of making weapons, or at least designing them. And this is a scale model of one of his designs for a catapult. Uh, so what you do is you wind up this mechanism, and as you do it, it moves the arm of the catapult backwards while also building up a lot of tension in these struts here, which are made of flexible wood. And once you've completely wound it up, you take out this pin, drop the ratchet here and the whole system will spin backwards and throw whatever vat of boiling oil that you've prepared onto your enemies and they'll all die. Oh, that's the plan. So we shall see. My enemies are over there. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so cool. Obviously war is bad and death is sad, but my enemies, <laughs> stupid enemies. That's amazing. The whole thing is sitting, it's floating on this platform so that it can rotate on the wheels at the bottom. It's almost Probably exactly how a bike works today. Lajos and his colleagues have already made scale models in various sizes of 45 of Leonardo da Vinci's drawings, but there's another 40 which could be turned into models as well, which they're planning to implement at some point. They're used in exhibitions all over the world, especially in Italy and China at the moment, but there's plans to expand it into other countries, which I think is a good thing because they are absolutely fascinating. It's a great chance to, to kind of get a practical look at the mind of one of the great figures of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci. And um, they're also really, really fun. <laughs> It's, it's like a boy's dream here. So, Kusnam Nayon Seep, Ben. Thank you very much. Nayon Erdekesh Rod. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best for the future. They're beautiful. Nayon Seep, Nayon Seep. B, I think I'm going to carry on a hammering now. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Right, so it's time for the most important part of the show now. Uh, we're here in St Imre, a small village in the area, and we've come here for a real decent of our gush. It's very early in the morning and it's very cold, so we're going to start the day with some palanca. But first of all, let me introduce everyone, because it's a real party here. Uh, interesting enough, there's an English friend of mine here. He's come along for the ride as well. This is Fergus. Uh, this is the family, the Debra Seni family, including our boss for the day, Debra Seni Shandor. And these men here will be the fogok, the people who are going to be catching and killing the pig in a moment. So we have five of those, one for each leg and one to deliver the fatal blow. Um, yeah, the day begins with palenka because uh, these are Hungarians and they love palenka and every festival has to begin with that. So, egeseget tekre, mindenkinek. But of course, there's one character that we haven't met yet who we should definitely go find now. Oh, the pig. So this is Virag. She is the pig. Uh, and I don't think she quite knows what her role in today's drama is going to be. She is a Mongolitsa pig, a lot like the ones that we saw in the Hortvaj. Uh, well known for their very tasty meat. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, she's quite friendly and nice, quite ashamed, but um, I guess it's time to get started. <laughs> After killing the pig, they cover it in straw and set it on fire. As well as ensuring the creature is definitely dead, it also serves to remove most of the coarse, bristly hair. Fergus, how are you finding it here? I think the palanca was... Um, important. It's, uh... It definitely helps. It's yeah, it's... Strong stuff. It's, um... Slightly warmer, standing next to the charred remains of this former animal. Um, it feels a little, um, a, a twinge of twinge of guilt here, sort of standing next to the burning carcass of something. Um, I have to say that actually, it was less horrific than I thought it would be. How horrific I was, did you think it would be? I was I was really nervous actually about coming here. I thought I was going to faint or <laughs> collapse or be sick, uh, but actually it was kind of. Yeah. Well, that's what this is for, of course. The palanca, yeah. And I'm Steady your nerves yeah. and all. Um, yes. But no, it was, uh, it was very interesting. Um, I'm, I think I'm the most disturbing thing is this pool of blood that's running down in front of us here. Yeah, um, the blood is quite disturbing. Gently congealing. That's, and that's true. Um, but you know, on the whole, I'm quite looking forward, actually, you know, to seeing what they do for the rest of the day, chopping it up, doing well, a bit what, of what we do as well. Right? What we do, yes, because actually, later on in the show, we're going to be trying to make some English sausages, if we have a chance. That's the plan because uh, I think they're very nice and I miss them a lot. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. A break in proceedings gave us a chance to look around the rest of the farm. It's, 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 it's quite picturesque, isn't it? A little, yeah. Countryside. I, so I wouldn't want to live here, but it is quite nice. And they've got a well. Oh, that's quite cool. Have they? Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. A washdown and a salt rub removes the soot and burnt hair. So we've come inside to get out of the cold for a while because it's absolutely freezing out there. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the work is over because for the rest of the day the kitchen is being turned into a factory. Of course we're still waiting for the meat off the pig but preparation is beginning here. On the rice it's going to form the base of the horka. Horka is normally actually a blood sausage but in this family they're going to be preparing it from a mixture of lung and liver. 
uh, which will be stuffed in the simming intestine, like normal sausage, uh, which we'll be making in a while, but the rice will be the base for the grain to keep it soft. Uh, over here, they're preparing fascia, kind of meatballs, from meat from another pig that's already been killed. Uh, and uh, that'll be breakfast for the men who are working outside soon. Here we have Yorlika, who is the chief housewife here, and will be our host for the day. But best of all, the best way to warm up when you come inside is with some mulled wine, which is here. It's made from the family's own wine, which is prepared from grapes that they grow on some of their land, just out the back. It's a mix of red and white grapes they use to make the wine, which is quite sweet. And it's cooked up just with some sugar and cinnamon, you know, like mulled wine always is. Uh, it's very sweet, very delicious, and the perfect way to warm up on what is a completely freezing day. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> so nice. What we're going to do now is make some horka, which is a kind of sausage made of the offal, so the, you know, the liver, the heart, the lungs, the kidney of the pig, uh, which have been boiling up now for about an hour to make sure they're all cooked. Uh, it's very similar to a Scottish dish called haggis, actually, if anyone knows that. Um, and um, yeah, but first of all, I'm just going to try some of the pork liver, because I really like liver. Uh, I've never tried pork liver before, apart from in pate, obviously, but um, apparently it's quite nice. But I'm not quite sure how to cut it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's not a nod. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Like salt. With a little bit of salt, apparently it's very, very tasty. That's quite a lot of salt. Hmm. Mm. 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 Tastes a bit like carved liver, just not as nice. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to eat the rest of it. <laughs> So it's 12.45 now, um, it's, yeah, so it's only just gone midday and I've already done more in one day than I thought would ever be possible. Drunk more palanca than I do on most evenings and um, watched a pig be killed. The space where the pig was killed has been completely cleared up and the entire carcass has been, well, dismembered. So what we have here waiting outside is we've got one side of the pig, much as the ones you see hanging in the butchers. Uh, here we've got the legs, each has been cut off, they're going to be chopped up into smaller pieces, turned into hams. The head will be used to make something called dis no shite, which is, well, I guess the, the English equivalent is head cheese, actually, uh, where bits of the head will be used to mix up with the stomach and kind of baked into a meatloaf type thing. Uh, in, in here is the meat being prepared. What we've got here is the kind of outside of the flank, uh, which is being separated out into bacon and then the layers of the skin and the fat, which will be turned into temperature, crackling, uh, and the fat is rendered down to make lard. Very important for your Girosh Kenya. And then over here we've got the kind of insides uh, where the ribs are and the fillets and things, and that's where you get your real kind of meat, your pork rib, your pork fillet. Um, yeah, and there's just some of the skin there in a bowl. So yeah, it's all in full swing. Fairly soon, <coughs> some of it might be edible. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, it's not chabla for it. Oh, chabla, not to read about it. <laughs> I guess I think today we've all got blood in our hands. A lot of the meat is minced for making sausages. The first sausage that's prepared is a classic Hungarian sausage. The meat is mixed with salt, pepper, garlic and paprika before being stuffed into the intestines of the pig. This sausage can then be smoked and dried to make a soft salami that will keep for months and taste great too. We're back at the grinding machine again now, uh, but this time we're going to be making the hurka, which is the kind of offal sausage, a little bit like Scottish haggis. Um, yeah, as I said before, the meat has all been boiled up, uh, and now it's now here at the table. Here's uh, the liver, which is what I tried earlier. And there's all sorts here. That's a heart. Those are the kidneys. 
This is the tongue, which is surprisingly enormous. Every time I see an animal's tongue, I'm, I'm shocked by its hugeness. This was the pancreas, and there's, there's just other bits here that I'm not quite sure what they are, but never mind, I'm sure it'll be delicious. Uh, basically, it all gets chopped up, put through the grinding machine, and then mixed up with this, which is huge quantities of rice, uh, which then gives the whole thing quite a light texture as it's put into the intestines, and then, yeah, it's going to be great, but we should get grinding. Ready? Yes. Pancreas. I have no idea what this stuff is, but um, slightly. I I think I don't know. Is that like stomach can't or put that all in at once? No, I can't. Is that legitimate? I th I think yeah. Apparently, it has to go in. Well, everything goes. Everything counts. I think I'm going to have to be quite brave to actually eat the stuff that we're producing. It's the fat from around the intestines. Oh, that's pretty cool. In a kind of morbid way. Oh, I'm just counting down the organs here. What is that? Is that a voice box? As I was hoping, I'm going to have the chance now to make some English sausages. Uh, I've never done this before in my life, but we thought it would be a nice idea to repay our host generosity by offering them something from our own country. Uh, well, he, he's Scottish, but you know, English sausages will do. Uh, what we're going to attempt to make is a Gloucester sausage, uh, which um, it's very, very different from a Hungarian sausage because as well as just the meat, this is just pork. There's no um, veal mixed into it. It's quite kind of fatty pork meat to keep it nice and soft. Um, we have a mixture of herbs to add, but the most important difference is this. Breadcrumbs will be added to give it a kind of soft, light texture that's very different from the texture of Hungarian sausage, which is just kind of meat. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to start by adding that. Um, the breadcrumb needs to add up to being about 10% of the volume of the meat, apparently. Um, remember, I've never done this before. Um, and to make sure the breadcrumbs uh, swell up and stay nice and soft, you need to add around about the same amount of water. Uh, so the whole thing's going to be quite soft. This recipe produces um, raw sausages that are fried before eating. Um, they're not smoked, they're not dried. Uh, you just kind of cook them straight away and eat them as they are. Um, right, but now the most important thing is to add the spice mixes, um, which means we need a lot of salt, of course, black pepper, finely ground, white pepper, which is quite popular in traditional British cooking. It's kind of fallen out of favour at the moment, but um, traditional things like this have quite a lot of white pepper in them as well. A little bit of thyme, a little bit of marjoram. So, you know, it's a very, lots of green herbs in this. No paprika, lots of green herbs. Sage, joya. Uh, we want quite a lot of that, really, because it's the thing that... Sage is basically what makes sausage taste of sausage, yeah? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we, we, we know completely what we're doing. It's going to be so great. So Can't wait tasty. For the next step, yeah. uh, right. And so, to start with. Uh, I reckon this is. Am I ready? That, that smells kind of like sausages, doesn't it? Yes. So, I'm just <laughs> going to add all of this, like so, and then mix it with my hands to form a kind of thick meat sort of mixture. All over your hands. All over my hands. 
I reckon that's just about done now. It's kind of mixed down with the breadcrumbs, completely mixed through the meat to a kind of quite light, soft sausage meat. And you can see the herbs are kind of scattered through it, bits of green everywhere. It's the mark of a good English sausage. And yeah, I think it's time to stuff it into some sausage cases. Let's give this a nice squeeze. Lovely. Feels like a bit of a cannonball. This so, is very exciting. Uh, now we're loading the sausage making machine, uh, which is this quite scary looking contraption. Uh, we're in slightly out of our depth because neither of us have ever done this before and I've not really got any idea Out of what our we're depth. Doing. Come on, Bryn, we witnessed the, the murder of a pig earlier. I think we're okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covered in stuff now. This is great. So I think that's going to work now. Hopefully. We'll find out. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. This is, of course, the intestine of the pig that was washed out earlier today. Uh, so that's traditional, because often it's made with synthetic stuff now, but this is genuine sausage made with genuine intestine. Right, should we go? Yeah, give right. me a shout when you want me to stop. Okay. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Ooh. Keep going. Oh, bubble, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so I keep, oh yeah, slowly, 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 slowly. slowly. Oh, it looks like a sausage. And that's it stops stop, 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 stop. Right, I think... Give it a whack with a knife. Give it a look. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, so there I is pressure. Okay, fine. And and so I just push it back, twist. and then... That's pretty well formed. Twist that, that, that looks like a sausage! That hey. looks like a sausage. Almost professional. Let's keep it up. That's, 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 quite, that's quite exciting. Um, so, and so the idea is that then you just keep twisting it every now and again and it makes a string of sausages. Right. Well, that's two sausages. So we've begun. Yes. They're, they're good. They're good. They, they look like sausages, don't they? The jury's out as to whether they taste good or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, look, they look edible. Two sausages. I'm very proud of myself right now. I'm very right. Right, right. So I need to load up some new intestine. Yeah, get all the juice out of it. Give it a quick... Run through your fingers. Now we were told earlier that this is an art traditionally done by the women here, who are the ones who know how to do this best. I think we're doing okay. Oh, no we're not. Oh dear. I think you'll know if you make a huge hole. Yeah. And this stuff is apparently very strong. Go. Uh, so we're kind of getting there, it's just, it's incredibly slow. <laughs> well, you know, once, once you practice the art, I think. That's true, yeah. You know, it's worth taking your time for a quality product, right? Go, 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 go. A bit quicker, a bit quicker. La, 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 la. Quicker, quicker, quicker. La, 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 la. Stop. That's our English sausages done. I think we've made about 20 of them and I don't know what they taste like yet, but I'm very pleased with them. Uh, thank you very much, Fergus. Thank you for having me, it's been uh, great. For accompanying me on my journey today. Um, yeah, I think they're going to be good. I just really hope my hosts like them because they're my thank you to my hosts today who've um, they're given me a really interesting experience. I was really quite nervous about coming, I have to say, today. I thought it was going to be awful, but it was a mixture of awful and very, very interesting. And I've really, yeah, I've really enjoyed myself. And I hope you found it interesting too to see how I've reacted during the day. And I hope you'll join us again next time on Home From Home. Bye.